Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Today's guest, of course, Callan, the rock star Potter, former UFC fighter, and he is joining me to chat about all things Australian MMA. We're breaking down the Hex Fight Series 28 card, which was November 18th, Festival Hall in Melbourne. John O'Mikaleff taking on Joseph Luciano for the Hex welterweight title. There's a lot of uh, preamble uh, up until that point uh, on Australian MMA, so check that out if you want to know a little bit more about those guys and that card. Heading in, we also tackle the Eternal MMA 82 uh, and official announcements, the fights, four title fights uh, being scheduled for HBF Stadium, Feb 10th, Eternal MMA 82 in Perth, plus some of the other events going on. Look, final one for the year as we uh, take a well-deserved rest. Me and Callan, the rock star pod. Australia and May will keep going, but we just let Callan get back to his family uh, and see if they're still there. Uh, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, check it out. It's Callan, the rock star pod. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the show, everyone's favourite, Callan, the rock star pod. Mate, welcome. Thank you very much, mate. Always a pleasure. Now, uh, we're going to get into the uh, uh, the Hex Fight Series 28 Card Festival Hall in Melbourne. As a man that had boots on the ground, uh, I'll just touch on, it was a beautiful show, mate. It was just Festival Hall, MMA in there. It's like, it's got a stadium feel, but then intimate vibe. Like, it's, it's small enough to still, like, you don't get lost in the moment type thing, but it is big enough to feel like a like a uh, heading towards that UFC level of a show. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's funny you say that. That was only one of my first questions asking people that I knew were at the show. I wanted to know what the venue sort of feel was like. And everyone gave that, that similar sort of feedback. It, it really had a nice feel about it. Yeah, the, just the way, and even like, I always like seeing this. I mean, it happens with, with Cam O'Neill too, with, with Eternal and, 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 and Vickers. Uh, Jacob Watts was out there, like making sure guests were okay. Like I love, I love seeing promoters. Of course, the great Wayne Carl does that with demolition. I just love when <laughs> the promoter doesn't. I know everyone that sits there probably thinks they sit on a throne and count their money, but I just, <laughs> I love seeing promoters in there. Like I'm pretty sure Jacob was getting someone a drink. Like I was like, that is what, you, that is what you like to see as a promoter. Yeah, a bit down to earth, a bit get getting the hands dirty, making sure the show's running as as per norm. Oh, you gotta love it. But mate, uh look, cracker of a show could have been an absolute disaster. Uh, because I got in on the Thursday. Now that is the press conference day. I'll touch a little bit on that with you as well. But we had three fights fall out. H- have you ever seen a card? go through so much. I mean, it reminded me, of course, of the, the Eternal Sydney card when we saw Eternal so Sydney many cards fall out. Yeah. But have you, in your fighting career, ever seen a, a, a card with that many fights fall out? I know I have. Nothing that comes to memory right now, whether that's CT or not, I couldn't answer that. <laughs> but it definitely, it, it happens. I've said a hundred times over, I would rather be the man taking the punches in the cage than organising the punches in the cage. It's just a horrible job dealing with, you know, fighters who are the biggest prima donnas on earth. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they think the world revolves around them. So as soon as something goes wrong, they're going to pull the play. It's just a horrible job. And uh, I'm glad that we got to see a, a pretty good product in the end. Yeah, Hex did a very, very good job at, uh, at still keeping the ball rolling. And, and you've got to love that as well, as did Eternal uh, way back in Sydney. The, the show goes on and, and they, they do keep you feeling that. Now, we had Sean Gauchy out. We found that mm. out at the press conference. That was devastating, of course, for Mr. Paul Logar, who had the Alan Philpot fight fall out on no. uh, formerly mentioned Eternal uh, to a uh, week prior. And then to have Gauchy out. I mean, look. Props to, to Logo for stepping up and being ready to take those fights, but you got to feel for him, don't you? Oh, it's just, it's a horrible place, but it's such a, a lesser occurrence. Now, I used to tell everyone the story back when I first started, back in the, the golden ages, as old as I am. I remember getting ready for five fights one year and fighting twice. You know what I mean? That was, but that was back mm. in the day. There was no MMA promotions. You were struggling to get a fight anywhere. It's a lot less of an occurrence now, but man, Mr. Paul Logan must have walked under some ladder or kicked a black cat somewhere because uh, he has not been blessed with any sort of luck lately. No, and it, what what kind of sucks too is he nearly had the opportunity of a lifetime where he fights for the bantamweight mm. belt against Sean Gauchi, but that kind of goes away, doesn't it? Yeah, like he, he did the right things. He was ready. He was ready to go. Put his hand up for the opportunity. <laughs> then he just gets ripped out from under again. I, I do hope 
he gets rewarded somewhere along the line in the, in the stratosphere of MMA with some sort of big fight up next. And we'll talk about these announcements a little bit later on, but same thing. His, his opponent, Philpot, uh, at the Eternal MMA 81 card falls out. Now Philpot gets a, gets a title shot. So Logan mm. must just be sitting there kicking rocks. Oh, mate, I don't know. He's again, he must have done something very horrible in a previous life to someone. So he's just God knows what's happened to the poor man. But look, he seems like a workman. He just seems like he, he, he as much as he'd be disappointed with this opportunity, I'm sure all he wants mm. is his chance to get in there, lace up, and just uh, throw some punches. And I will give him this though. Like I've, I've I've known Paul Logan, not not well, but I've just seen him around at nine and seven. He wasn't always the guy. I've been mean, cracker of a fighter, but he wasn't always a guy that I was ready to pay money to see. I tell you what, after spending the week with him, seeing him at the press conference, going back yes. and forth with Emrahan Hegemoglu and his manager and anyone else in the crowd and anyone else that wants it, that the man is the man is showbiz. Like put put a mic in front of him before he fights, and I reckon everyone tunes in. Yeah, absolutely. Make sure at some stage we come back to what you just said then about the the press conference with the manager and all that. Make sure we come back to that. Put a put a pin in that. About I don't I don't steam up too much, but I'll come back to that with a bit of steam later. But uh, absolutely, <clears throat> I, I think he's he, I, I think his stock's risen a little bit through mm-hmm. that. He's he's yeah. got a little bit of shot on that to show that you know what I mean. He wasn't out there causing any sort of drama, but he was also taking no nonsense in the process either, which I really loved. And uh, again, I, I I would be very keen. To, uh, to see that man back in the cage. Now, I want your thoughts on uh, Khan Husmak, who was supposed to be taking on Michael uh, Tapo, who uh, unfortunately came in seven kilograms over Khan Husmak's fight, was called off at the weigh-ins. Um, a real debacle there. Uh, Khan Husmak has a video on his YouTube page. You can see the, the struggle he went through for his uh, weight cut, getting all the way down to 70. Michael Tapo uh, rocks up. Uh, weighs in at 77 kilos. Now, the story is uh, he got as low as 73. This is from him. Uh, as low as 74, I think it was. Uh, passed out, started rehydrating, back up to 77. Didn't know what was going on. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, you, you, I'm the last guy you're going to get sympathy out of with, with all of that. I, I, I love that we the, the sport is now moving away from these gigantic weight cuts, but... I don't care. Pass it. Well, then you know what? You didn't do the right things in the prep up to it. If you sign your name to that not that line, I, I honestly thought when I first saw it, oh, they must have been a discrepancy in the in the contract. He must have got a welterweight contract, and no. And then I heard that that exact story. I'm like, that is ridiculous. You know, if you're if you're cutting to the point of passing out, you obviously haven't done the right things leading up. This is coming from a man that's had to cut some serious bloody weight. One of the things I'm more proud of than I've never missed weight in my life. You sign that to your, your name. You make sure you do everything you can to make that way. And I absolutely feel for Khan because he was there he was looking to bounce back into the, in the wind car. I'm sure he's trained his backside off and he misses. Uh, through no fault of his own, he misses his chance now to get in there and compete. Really unprofessional. Yeah, I think it's really bad too because, of course, uh, Khan Husmak went through with his own weight cut. And like we said, he, he's he been a highly touted uh, amateur, comes out, doesn't have the best performance against Harry Webb. He's looking looking to bounce back, get to get his moment, and it gets taken away from him. Um, as a fighter, coach, I mean, never going to be a promoter, but what do you do with a guy that misses weight by seven kilos? There just- needs to be more accountability. So I, 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 got, I got really fired up about it. Again, coming from a point of a coach's position – it's a lot. There's a lot more accountability at pro than there is amateurs. Obviously, uh, there's uh, money we can now deal with at the pro. But I think there needs to be more accountability with that. I'd start to, like, I'm, and I'm sure anyone's going to do it. It'll be the, the sports combat board in Victoria. Start revoking people's licenses. These are licensed fighters. Revoke their license. You know what I mean? I, I understand. Look, if you come and miss by, you shouldn't be missing weight ever. But if you miss by 500 grams, something's going on. Okay, listen, guys, don't ever. You miss by seven kilos, or you're having multiple times missing weight. Revoke your license. Mm. It, but what what's you're not showing you're a professional fighter so we shouldn't be licensed you as a professional fighter that's actually that's that's very valid i was thinking it should be an automatic like loss on your record but i i like that as well i like i i think it, it hits the nail on the head there where you just go no 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 you're not a professional so you don't get to fight anymore and i think that no, i think that's yeah. the, the perfect way to do it the, uh, the loss the loss thing's hard again like i, I get that too and so i remember someone else saying it a while back too but I'm sure if you went and talked to Khan, he doesn't want that. No. He wants his chance to go in there, put hands on someone and get himself a win. You know what I mean? So I get totally get that. Loss comes on the record. But 
he doesn't want to have on his record a win and next a win. Yeah. Win via weight miss. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, doesn't do much for, for Khan, I'd imagine. But the one thing that you will like is is uh, Husmek is actually no longer going to try and get to lightweight anyway because he had his own struggles. He made it like a yeah. professional, but uh, he will now only take, which is unique, but I actually like this. He will now only take fights at 74 kilos. Yeah, so that puts out the super lightweight. Yeah. Which a lot of, which a lot of uh, promotions are starting to instigate that uh, that weight division. Yeah, I mean, we we had the the, the Max Kelly Jack Lyons fight, I believe, was at seventy four kilos. It's like, why not? Because Calm goes, if the UFC comes a knocking, sure, I'll cut to lightweight, or you know, uh, I'll go to seventy seven or whatever. But like, yep. while I'm on the regional scene and I'm making you know a couple hundred bucks or whatever it is, why kill yourself? You know, get yeah, to get to seventy four. Yeah, I love it. I love, and again, I love the, the fact that that the big weight cuts are now moving away, even at the highest level. You know what I mean? You, I think you talk to a lot of guys and every, a lot of people moving away from it. So to, seeing it, fil- a lot of what happens at the top end is going to filter down to the local scene and it's starting to happen now, which is awesome. I think he's made a very wise decision there. I mean, man, I was brought into the sport from the king of weight cuts, Steve the Steamroller Kennedy. That man would cut like 30 <laughs> kilos in one night. I saw him oh. die like three times and then go on and win the fight. Oh, yeah. I, I think I had his first or second fight with him at, at, at Welter. I remember when he made weight. <laughs> And uh, and I just sort of I, I I went into shock mate, and he just looked at me and yeah yeah told ya. Well, you actually you actually would have now that on the weight cuts you would have remembered another one my my cousin Isaac Tisdall making lightweight. Oh my god, a big Isaac, my main man Isaac. I remember giving him go. We both didn't look great at the weigh-ins. But uh, then he's thinking, but he's look, and I tell you what, the latest photos I've seen of Mister Tisdall, he looks back in really good shape. Looks yes. physical at the moment. Yeah, he's he's getting ready for his slap jujitsu match with you. Now, my... <laughs> <laughs> now uh, another one before we get into the actual fights. These are just the fights that fell out. Raja Shippen versus uh, oh. Ranu Singh from India. Now, this man came in. Now, you can say, look, when you, you book internationals, these things are a risk. However, I will stick up for Hex on this one. I believe he was 10 and 2, 11 and 2. He was on road to UFC. The man is representing India. You would assume that this man has some professionalism, but not only does he miss his flight to come into Australia, therefore has to weigh in at 10 a.m. the next day after the weigh-in. He comes in at 73 kilos. He's supposed to fight, I believe, at 68 after after he already asked for an additional two kilos. It was supposed to be at featherweight with Roger Shippen at 66. He gets in at 74. He says, I cannot wait. I cannot cut any more weight. It's 12.30 at night. Jacob Watts, the head promoter of Hex, goes, F that. He grabs three hoodies. He grabs an MA1 sauna suit. He grabs some pads. He drives on over to the hotel. He works the man out until he gets to 70 kilos. And then the guy goes, look, I'm just, I'm going to go to sleep now. And then when I wake up, I'll, I'll cut the rest. Jacob, who's spent a couple of hours with him, goes, I will do it. He walks away. The guy wakes up in the middle of the night, starts hydrating, eating, weighs 74 kilos, says, I can't do it, not going to do it. Jacob goes back to the hotel in the morning. He has gone AWOL. They cannot find him. Well, that's a mini series. <laughs> that's going to be on Netflix at some stage. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But gee, good effort by Jack. Well done, him, mate. Like, talk, again, like, I mean, props. Wants to make it happen. Like, oh, tell you and- what. We would be the first to hammer a promotion for doing an international fight if that happens, right? But if you look at the man's record leading up and everything, you can, and it's Raja Shippen. He's hard to get a fight for anyway in, yeah. in Australia. He's such a killer. I kind of think you can blame the promotion. And like we said, what Jacob did is incredible. I know, I know Cam probably would have done the same thing for Eternal. Yeah. Like the, what, yeah. what these promoted, in fact, the David Martinez thing of, of making sure he gets weighed in at the hospital, yeah. whatever your thoughts are on that, that is a passionate man about keeping the fight alive. And Martinez goes on to win. So it was a great decision. But how good is that? What our promoters are going to do to make oh. these fights happen? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So again, again, I will take all the punches, not to yeah. be the one, not to be the one in the suit standing next to it, uh, trying to organise them. I'll even tell you this, right? So he eventually, he eventually um, made contact during the fight. This is how much of a gangster Roger Shippen is. He messaged him and he said, "You can weigh in at seventy four. I'll weigh in like oh, I've weighed in at sixty eight. You weigh whatever you weigh." And they talked to the commission and they said, "If you can get here in an hour, the fight's still on." Oh. 
Is that the Victorian sports board said mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. Oh my god, they were they, geez, they were even they were going out on the limb trying to help Hex out, and the guy just said, "Nah, not having a bar of it." I just yep, AWOL, and 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 who I've knows? I've got myself a free flight to Melbourne. I'm I'm at bar twenty right now. Leave me alone. Yeah, who knows, man? There's uh, more to come, as I like to say. There will be more to come on that story. Oh, but that's one of the Jesus. that's one of the craziest avoiding a fight stories I've. Oh, ever mate, that's a mini series. That's going to oh. be on time time life somewhere. <laughs> oh. Tell you what. I love it, mate. Now we head to the actual card, the actual uh, fight. Oh, card. that's right. There was some fights that night. I forgot about that. <laughs> now you you would have saw, um, I believe, the fight card on the pay per view, correct? On the BN correct. Sports. What did it, I was on the ground? What did you What did you see on the stream? How was How was the uh, the performance? Yeah, it was hard to get a gauge from of the actual venue. That's why I kept asking people because it just looked like it's a lot of darkness outside yeah. of the cage and that. It, the, the stream was fine and that, but I wanted to really get a feel of people, like you said, with uh, with uh, boots on the ground to see what the feel was like. It looked no different to a lot of other fight shows because outside of the cage, you're not getting a much humiliation, but the, the walkouts look great. Everything looked, looked sensational. And first fight of the card, Troy Fumo versus Marco Olovic. Did you see much of that fight? Yeah, I got bits and pieces. I know uh, I know uh, Marco's coach really well. Obviously, I've mm-hmm. seen Trumo fight a little bit. Uh, you know, the fact that, you know, he got pretty close in the first round, Marco managed to, I know Marco yeah. from his size has got some very powerful hands on him. Hasn't got the depth in the grappling. I think yeah, everyone sort of knew that going in and, and Fumo was able to uh, unleash that. Fumo still did a great job of getting off some ground and bound. Wasn't just trying to hold the man down. He busted uh, he busted Marco open a bit. But, um, uh, you know, I think Marco is one of those guys. Again, I've, I've done a little bit of training with Marco and I know his coach very well. If he gets some good grappling out accolades to his, he can be a problem with that weight class, but very well done to Fumo. And uh, a little bit of inside knowledge show, ran into Fumo the day or two after. And he does his fight camps in Queensland with Dunstan Death Squad, I believe lives in Melbourne. So flies, yeah, I saw it. So yeah. He does train out of, is it Pro Fitness? That's his yeah. actual gym. But he was at doing his camp at Dunstan's. It was just yeah. this one though, wasn't it? He, or this was the does, first? he does all of them. He met him at the IMAFFBA MMA FAA. <laughs> you know, <laughs> whatever that the amateur world champs is. I believe he met him there, and that's and so he does all his fight camps uh, out of there. So flies up. I mean, that's commitment mm. if I've ever seen it. So yeah, it's a good crack. Yeah, I love it. That's a good crack. Um, that one. Now, uh, another good crack that I enjoyed uh, was, I believe, the 74-kilogram catchweight bout. Jack Lyons, welcome back against uh, Max Kelly out of out of Base Training Center, one of Damien Brown's boys. Jack Lyons out of XFC. Just uh, how that man even made the 74-kilogram catchweight is incredible. Jack Lyons is massive. He's a big boy. He's a bit, and Am I correct in thinking his only loss at pro is to Abdul Biata? Correct. Yeah, so that's a pretty yeah. handy man to have. Yeah, and it was a split decision, I believe. So it was super close. Yeah. So um, yeah, he's a big, th- he's a big, thick, strong boy. And again, Max Kelly's nobody's fool. Oh. So that's a that's a very handy win. Yeah, without a doubt, Max Kelly. I think he's two and two now. Ma- Max yeah. Kelly. He he, Mad Max Kelly. He's a personality man. Put a mic in front of his face as well. He's an absolute cracker. <laughs> he's one of them guys that's going to fight anyone. You, you, he'll fill out a card forever. He'll be that third, fourth fight. In in any card ever, yeah, he's, he's very exciting. Yeah. Uh, Jack Lyons too, although the devastating power, he's the same man that ran fifty three marathons in fifty three days. That's so, right. Yes. I was trying to remember whether that was because <laughs> you know he comes to the gym with Webb and um, mm. and all those boys, and I couldn't remember whether that was him. Jesus, talk about an athlete! Blood yeah, up. he is incredible. So I wouldn't be surprised if Jack Lyons. A, a fight I'd like to maybe see with him is 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 maybe a Medina, like one of those sorts of like like throw him right yep. into that. That sort of um, end there, I think. I think that could be a, a a nice fight for him and Max Kelly. I mean, there's so many fights for for him. So I just want to see those boys keep moving. But Jack Lyons, I think one more fight and we could start talking about him him being a real contender. Yeah, spot on, spot on. So without putting him about four and one, am I correct? Yeah. That after that yep. win, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. He's a, he's he's breaching right of that zone now. But light lightweight, of course. I mean, if you're in flyweight, four and one, you might get a title shot type thing. But at lightweight, yep. you just got to do a little bit more work. Thick as the sneakers. Oh, speaking of lightweight, the human highlight reel, Harry Webb, Neam oh. Steven, TKO round two. Now, for a man that is abs- going to be an absolute superstar and Hex is putting all their chips on him, he felt kind of forgotten that week, Harry Webb. Well, because he didn't do he didn't do anything silly. He was just got in there, <laughs> made way, 
tucked his chin, got in there, beat someone up. Like, mate, come on, do something. Crash your car. <laughs> release a sex tape. Do something, mate. Get your name out of there. <laughs> well, I tell you what, there'd be a lot of female fighters that would enjoy that. He's, <laughs> he's, a, he's a good-looking man. Uh, but look, Harry Webb, the, the sky's the limit for him. If I must give uh, Nam Star- Steven uh, credit, I believe his last, I think he's like three and four now, or, or, or I don't know what his official record is, but I know that his three losses have come from Harry Webb, uh, Quillen Southkill, and Tom Nolan. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, that you're on everyone. <laughs> yeah. Like, that you're on everyone. That's, that's it. That's a BMF right there. Like he he gets credit just there. Nyam Steven is is that that same sort of guy, similar to what we're talking about, Max Kelly. Like we just we'll we'll fight anyone now, and they're going to need a couple of wins in a row, of course, to to get rolling again. But Nyam Steven, uh, I mean, anyone will have him on that show. Harry Webb, what's what's next for the boy? So again, we so that puts him at three and O. Oh. Yes. So yeah, ten, so, 10 and 0 collectively, like collectively as well. amateur as well. And this is what I was going to touch on tonight. So we're going to we'll obviously talk about our uh, our new welterweight champion later in the card, who's who's not far off that is when we go, oh, 3 and 0, still. It's I think 3 and 0 now in the current climate, it's a little bit different than it was back in the day. Because like we said, it's 3 and 0 at pro, but there's a substantial amount yeah. of amateur groups here. So it does move a bit quicker. He, like... Nam Stevens a big step from he's taking great, very significant mm. steps up. Nam Stevens another great step. The next step's got to be big again. I was trying, I was running through my head about some names. He does need that that higher up there name now. You know what I mean? He's one win off now, challenging for some of those titles, and he's two wins off, possibly looking at the big international scene. Yeah, it, I actually would have liked it. Now I know that, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on as well. But uh, Harry Webb versus Don Marfan, I thought would have been a cracker of a fight. Yeah, I was thinking that, but I've got I've got a different name in mind. Oh, who you got? I would actually wouldn't mind seeing just for a strategic point of view and making work. I wouldn't hate seeing Don uh, Harry Webb versus Blake Donnelly. Oh, that is a cracker. Yeah, I would just for the strategic. Blake Donnelly mm. again gets forgotten. He had a couple of bad losses, but Jeff, Blake Donnelly is a hard rap, rap for anyone. Big, long, rangy striker. You have to be switched on with him. Yeah, uh, I think he he would test a lot of things with Harry that we haven't seen before, and we again true. have to see takedown defense. Amazing. Mm. That's a great fight. Yeah, and. Harry Webb, I mean, it looks like he hasn't really been tested in that sense. Like he's had some nice fights. Yeah. Like the, the, even the Ollie Schmidt fight was a like it was a nice fight. It wasn't a, yeah. a, a molly whopping type thing. But like we haven't seen him like properly challenge challenge. Yeah. So that I think that would be very good if Blake Donnelly could test him. And then we've got you know then by your fifth fight you you're in a number one contenders fight or you're yeah. you're fighting for a title. Spot on, spot and, on. And then Blake, even if Blake Donnelly wins that, you. You know, you, you you beat Harry Webb. He might be three and zero, but he's Harry Webb. Like everyone talks about him, like he's may as well be ten and zero. Yeah, spot on. And then that, that puts Donnelly Don, again. Donnelly's only ever one. He's one of those guys very similar to Martinez. He's only one fight out from a title contender. Like he's a yeah. one good win out from competing for every belt in the country. Yeah, it's and and that in itself. Speaking of Martinez and and Togo, put the, put a pin in that one for a little bit later. Uh, yes. <laughs> geez. Now, did you see the the Olsen to Jesus versus uh, Joshua Riley fight? No, that's the one I didn't quite get the thing, but I heard it was a, a very nice wrap up by the Jiu Jitsu Black Belt. Yeah, it was very nice. Just a nice Jiu Jitsu. If you want to check out B in Sports, I won't go into that one too much because I was busy with an interview as well. I do apologize to both those boys. Yeah, apologize to both those lads. I'm sure yeah. it was a, it was a great fight too. Definitely, we'll go rewatch that. But I heard that that was a very nice submission. Now we move to the uh, the people's main event: Michael Manu versus Emrahan. <laughs> the people's main event. That's sensational. Oh, oh, I love it. What were your thoughts on first of all the lead up, and then the fight? Okay, so let's start, we'll start with the lead up. That makes a bit more sense. I have zero issue with anything Hecky Moglu did. I, I love. I'm a big Uncle Jail fan. As Uncle Jail used to say, if you're the one that's going to get in there and and throw punches, you can say whatever you want. You're willing to to sign the dotted line, get in that cage, say what you want. If you are not, then don't. Where I had an issue at the press conference, you know what I mean? He is going at Loga, Loga's going back at him. These are both fighters that are will, were willing to get into that, that very cage the next night. There was a voice from the crowd. I have no idea who it was. Still to this day, I have no idea who it was. I'm guessing it was management for Hecky Moglu that decided to pop up and throw a threat towards Loga. I've got no time for that. 
You're not getting in that cage. You're not on that. This is not your platform at all. Your boy's taking care of himself. He's piping up enough. Mm. All right. If you're not the one that's signing the dotted line as a professional fighter, this is not your platform. All right. I don't go to watch Robert Williams to have some bloke in the crowd sing his songs. All right. This is not your platform. Let the fighters do the talking because the fighters are going to do the fighting. Zero time for that. That's a, it's a great quote. I'm going to put that on a t-shirt. Uh, like <laughs> the, it, it was indeed his manager and it was, you know, it's a tough, it's a tough position for that whole team to be. And I will say that the, the head coach for Emrahan, uh, Barack Samet, now, great jiu-jitsu guy. He's turning into like a good head coach manager. guy. I think he handled it all really, really well. Like he didn't, you know, he wasn't pushing and shoving and, and creating fights himself, but he also wasn't being apologetic for his fighter either. He had his fighters back in the most professional way. He let Emrahan do Emrahan's thing. That might not be Barak's thing or whatever, but like he let, he let Emrahan do his thing, supported him, but didn't step outside of his own character to do so. So in the weirdest way possible, I want to kind of give props to Barak for how he, he handled the entire lead up because Emrahan got to sell his tickets and, and do what he does, but Barack didn't have to sell his soul to support him. So, but well, and it, uh, that doesn't surprise me. I've known Barack for a very long time. It doesn't surprise me. At all. Again, it did the exact thing. Was there support? It. Let let his fighter do his fighters thing. You know what I mean? It's not that's not my style. I've never done that. But mm-hmm. it, man, it, it seems like that's who Emrahan is. Do it if you got if you're willing to lace up your gloves and jump in the next. You be you. Yeah. Now the manager, uh, I believe is the manager. Uh, he even got into a bit of like, um, I mean, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but on the way back, there was Damien Brown and him were having some, uh, some exchanging pleasantries as they went back to the change room. So that was always, that was an interesting. I'm sure I'm, I'm, I've almost put my last dollar on that. Maybe Damien Brown was maybe vocalizing something <laughs> similar to what I just said then, mate. Mate, if you're not fighting, then keep him out. And let me tell you, the manager wanted me to be He's doing better than just handling dollars and cents if he's going to go have a have a yap with beat down. <laughs> oh, I love it, mate. It was look it, being in there. The energy was electric. What were your thoughts on the actual fight, Michael Mano taking care of business? Uh, yeah. Really, Emrahan looked good for the first couple of minutes, but then Michael Mano, we just saw uh, levels above. Yeah, look, it, it it played out one of the the two main ways we saw it playing out. If Abraham was going to have to go in there and impose his grappling, oh, I've done a lot of work with Manu. I know, you know, how proficient he quite is as a grappler. Um, I think he was a bit silly for trying to sell out on a choke for so long, but I think he'll come back and have a look at that. I think that tied his arms out a little bit. But, it, you know, it, as soon as the pace of that fight sort of slowed, it went, then it suited Manu. Manu was able to pick shot, better shots and, and all that. I, I think that if it got to that train, as soon as it got past that initial storm, which was all which uh, Emma was always going to bring. It was always going to lean in in Manu's favour, and he he looked a lot more seasoned, a lot more composed, and just picked really good shots. Now I think Manu. Uh, I mean, I know that he's one of his close friends, Sean Gauchy, has the hex belt as long as that stays at bantamweight. I would not be surprised if if we see Manu be next out of you know maybe jump ship to Eternal and 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 has a title shot there in the near future. He's very very close to that, but there will be no bantamweight title fight between um, Gauchy and Manu in in the future. So if you're looking for that, it's not going to happen. Well, I've got a uh, I've got a little sneaky one I reckon for you. So right. I'll, so. Obviously, the big announcement for, for Hex was they're uh, they're popping across the the pond, heading over to New Zealand. Oh, tell me. So I reckon. So obviously, they're going to have to rebook the mm-hmm. Banaway title, but between Gauchi and Haddon. Yep. I suggest they'll even fly those two boys over. Yeah. All right. As you pointed out, Manu is not going to go fight. I could tell, I could put my last dollar that fight will never happen in a million years. Those guys are. are Thick as thieves, and they shouldn't have to fight. I agree with that. There is a very talented bantamweight coming out of New Zealand that d- doesn't get a lot of knowledge over here. He doesn't mm-hmm. get a lot of fights done. Aaron Tayu. Yeah, I would love to see Manu go over and have a have a, a match with Tayu. G- gets Manu over there, that'll put him right up. Th- then he can go off to, to greener pastures and and fight for another title. Other way around, Tayu g- gets a win in that. The thing that puts his name right in. Yep. again. I don't think a lot of the local scene in uh, on the mainland. Air quotes uh, are quite familiar with his work. He's a very tough little bantamweight. Yeah, he is absolutely Google Google his name. He has got some devastating uh, knockouts. So look, I do like that. Emrahan, I still do believe. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing him fight Paul Loga, but honestly, I think the way Paul Loga has been oh, treated yeah. lately, he he actually probably deserves a better fight. And the way Emrahan looked, um, and I don't think I'm stepping out of line by saying this. I I I don't. I think I'd like to see him 
go out and dominate someone else again and then set another one of these fights up. Maybe I'll take the Colby thickness fight because it's it's Colby coming back from an injury and whatnot. But I think Emrahan needs to have a strong showing uh, yeah. against someone else and and quickly. And he will. He'll bounce back. And just so we can get a bit of that Emrahan steam back because you don't just want to put him back with Loga and then every Loga comeback is going to be like, well, you got you got whooped. You know what I mean? So it's like we want to yeah. see some steam. When you take when you take that classic wrestler heel storyline and he does it well, I don't yeah. think he's actually putting on a, a facade. I don't think that's him. He's, he likes that. Yeah. Yet it sort of loses its potency when you're not whooping some ass on a semi regular basis. So yeah, I a hundred percent. You want to keep that character working? Let's put him back into a, a bit of a launching platform. Yeah, I'll even take him against a, a two and four kickboxer that he just goes out and strangles like that. And, and I, I, like honestly, I'll take that. And then you can come back and you can go fight everyone. I'm good with that one. Yeah. But yeah, what you're saying. Want to see some steam now? Did you did you see in the in the fight that we all questioned coming in? <laughs> AFL legend Brendan Favola taking on uh, Tony the tradie Anthony Sacconi, I think his uh, last name is. Did you see that? What were your thoughts? <laughs> Do you know what? I think it was best case scenario <laughs> for all involved. Yeah, all involved, and the, and they picked they both got. I actually know that the, Tony the tradie. I've done some training with him yeah. before, and he's a is he a purple guy. belt? Pardon? I don't, actually... he's, ooh, I don't know about that. I think he's definitely a blue belt, yeah. at least. So, uh, and, yeah, he knows how to grapple. Yeah. So, so I suspect he um, he was he certainly wasn't trying to take any part of uh, Brendan home with him that night. Best case scenario, that, that it was great promotion from the for the for Hex. Uh, you know what I mean? The Favola got to go out there. No one twisted their knee eighteen degrees in the wrong direction. Everyone got to get up and have a chuckle. Favola got to find out just how exhausting our sport. It was so funny to see how tired he got. I just, I yeah. love, and I love that he lent into it. I love that he was like, he didn't go. No, nah, I'm fine. That man laid on the ground like stuff. This, I am tired. I don't care. Who knows? <laughs> I loved it. Actually, yeah. I enjoyed it. You know what I mean? I'm a, yeah. I'm a purist like yourself, but I enjoyed it, mate. It was, I think, out of a, out of a freak show scenario, it was best case on, on all counts. Yeah, and being at the show live, I actually preferred it better than um, like back at the pavilion. There was sometimes like performances, like belly dancing right. or like Chinese dragon stuff, which is all cool for a live crowd. But I don't hey, mind. Hey, that. What it wasn't there? Wasn't Jason Derulo kicking there? Yeah. Once? Did we no, have uh, Timo, Timo Maddox. Show, Timo Maddox. Timo Maddox, sorry. <laughs> one of the most classic, and I love how relationship, but one of the most classic rants of all time is Cam O'Neill on Timo Maddox. <laughs> it's one of my favorite rants of all time. Uh, now, look, it was, it, it, like you said, it, it, it did the job that they wanted to do. It was best case scenario. We were a bit um, hesitant going in. I would have rather it not be the co-main event, but I think yeah. with fights falling out, it, it was what it was. And it if was I could just what say it was. this, if I could just say this, Mr. Favola, this is my one shout out. Now I know that Hex treated him well because that is what Hex do. They give you the star treatment. Him and his uh, coach Sam Greco bloody got their own private dressing room. Oh, oh mate, mate, <laughs> this Sam Greco, you do what you want, mate. Big Grex, <laughs> Grex does some stuff around, mate. I'm sure he would have had a beautiful Shiraz in there. Probably he's, he, had a, he probably would have had an express. And mate, good Big Grex does some stuff around. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen Big Rex in a little while, mate. Shout out uh, to Big Rex. I miss you, mate. But mate, it was look, it was good. It was it was a good time. Uh it then took us to the serious <sighs> business. And this is what I liked out of the card is there was shenanigans at the start. There was shenanigans in the lead up. There was uh like we said, some fun with the Favola. But boy, when it was time for business, John O'Mikalev, Joseph Luciano, Hex Fight Series, Walter Weight title, that was a fight. Wow. Just, just wow. You know what I mean? I, I've done a lot of work. I'm lucky to, to have done a, a good bit of work with John O. And anyone that's done some work with him knows just how, how to, I don't want to, it's, this is one of the best things I don't want to say talented because he is very talented, mm. but I, I don't want to say anything that hinders from just how much that young man's worked his backside off and earned what he's got. He is one of the, he's one of those guys that has, has clawed every stitch of the way to get to where he is right now. So I couldn't be happier for him. No, Joe, I, I, I chatted to the great Sammy Haywood, which I think was great to get him on camera. Go check that out if you can. I, li I love chatting to the coaches of these champions because they do not want any spotlight, and that's why I love to put it there, is because these are the guys that help make the champions. Now, he John O'Mikolev had so much talent that he basically forced Sammy Haywood to create a gym. 
Like that is like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the story he tells is that he, he was getting uh, Mikalev ready and he was just like, this kid is incredible. And he's like, I'm almost going to bet the house on him. And, and he did. And it, it is paying off. And Callum Potter, I am 0 for 2 in saying guys are not ready for title shots. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the start of the interview. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus oh, Christ. My. Him and Quillen Southfield, John uh, Mikalev, they just get to have this little party of Mitch Tinley said we're not ready for a title shot and just devastatingly proved me wrong because that, I mean, and I am a Joseph Luciano Yep. fanboy i really am and i love the narrative i love the story and i think he's a great guy even out of the cage with all of his coaching and i think he is ready for the next level but Jono just beat him every which way possible now i do think luciano won the fifth but that was more out of you know necessity like you you know you've got to try and get a finish yeah. type thing Jono's yeah. almost perhaps even protecting the four rounds, you know, while still in the fight type thing. But I think the 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 round which if we maybe saw Joey do that earlier, uh, there could have been some different sort of success for Joey. But I really can't fault Jono at all. No, and then, and I think a lot of people thought it was a real striker versus grappler match, which it kind of bad. But then just to see the levels of grappling that that a lot of people don't know Jono's got as well to go along with his amazing striking and his balance and his athleticism and his ridiculous Clydesdale like cardio. Uh. Like it was, it was just a, it was a really great coming out party for him. And, and I, and I'm sure he won't say it. And I hope nobody says it, that, you know, jo, that I, it, no way. I'm a huge Luciano fan as well. No way do I think Luciano had a, an off night. I think Luciano was there ready to fight. He just ran into a, a perfect storm, which is where, uh, Donald McAuliffe's out at the moment. He's just a perfect storm of, of of the training and the preps and the years upon years of the amateurs going into the pros. Like that kid's that kid's strapped in, ready to launch. Yeah, no, without a doubt. And uh Luciano look or oh, I'll actually say the other way around. Mikalev looked huge. Like he looked like he could have been a middleweight. Like he is a yeah. big boy. He yeah, I, th- I reckon it's got a lot. Like, he's big. Like he, he did fought a lot of uh, if his amateurs at, at middle. The man's sh- r- 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 <laughs> yeah. The man is absolute cos lettuce. Let me tell you. Uh, but I I think it's more about the way he's 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 built. He's really bulgy and he's got a tiny little waist and, yeah. and then his shoulders come out of nowhere. So he is big, but he's he's definitely a welter. Like it's not yeah. the sort of guy. I don't think he's cutting exorbitant amounts of weight to, to make well it's just a, a sensible amount i would say but um he's just you know, shredded you know built like a great guy when he used to walk around the gym when i was uh, when he was working down at resilience i'd get no one no one want to be around with him without my shirt off oh mate without a doubt he looks like rocks wrapped in glad wrap like it's just <laughs> it's incredible like oh, yeah. that that man and and what he has done like he is no one came out as a bigger winner as John O'Mikalev. Now, beating Joseph Luciano was going to do one thing, like I said, but the way he beat him, man, that that I'm all in. Like, I'm a victim at the moment. Don't get me wrong. I always buy into whatever I see, but Jesus Christ, I think Mikalev is on that Quillen Southfield, Tom Nolan, like uh, then the Ursig, Jack Della. Like, I think that he's going to be right at the door, and when he gets in the door, he could be a, he could be an absolute superstar. Yeah, I think he shot. I just think he's again. I might might be biased. I don't work. I think he shot. I think he shot straight through it. Ugh. You know what I mean? And, and and I think I couldn't agree more. The way he won, if he had to come out there and thrown that beautiful head kick and knocked him out in the first, I don't think it would have done as much for his stock as just absolutely grinding through five rounds, mixing in his striking with his wrestling, with his grappling, showing levels upon levels on on everything, and just just showing the, that where he's ready to go. I'll say something controversial. I I was pushing for the veil fight the whole time, right? With Luciano, if he won. And even if Jono won, I was, I even asked him uh, and to see, to see Jono post fight. And even in the interviews that I did, the personality just oozing out of him, the passion, like that was there. He didn't need to shit talk. And that's what I think was a perfect uh, sort of story of the whole card is it came in and the guys that talked shit were the ones that got all the press. And mm. we finished the night with the guy that deserves all the praise getting it. And getting it, yeah. I, I think it's amazing. And and I'll say something controversial here, but I think if he versus Vale, I'm a victim of the moment here, but I might, I might put uh, Mikalev as the favorite. Yeah. I, I did hear you bring that up and I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go completely on a side, a side of that. I've, I've got, Absolutely zero interest in in that fight. Really? 
zero interest. And and where I'm at with it now, and again, it's going to sound like I will throw shade at Matty, but I've got nothing but love. He is definitely at that level. And I am, certainly don't live in the man's pockets. So I don't know about the scenario. I, I, I didn't like the Matt Vale-Luciano fight at, at that stage. Really? Just because of his inactivity. Again, I don't live in the man's pocket. I'm sure. I, I'm sure. I've, I've heard things about him struggling to find fights. But it, it, am I correct? Is he had one in the last two years? It, it might be something like that, and then another one in the last another two. It's uh, it's. I, I don't, again, I don't know what's going on. It, it just it, it robs of what the what these sort of guys are doing at the moment. If I had my if I had a crystal ball and I could make exactly what's going on right now again, biased. I will always claim to be biased. I am biased as I want to be. My best case scenario right now is is John and McAuliffe jumps straight on that bandwagon off to the contender series. Really? Gets his gets his Tom Nolan style. Gets his gets his shot. He's off to contender. Luciano now versus Matt Vale for that vacant welterweight title. Now to me, that's that fight makes sense. Okay. Okay. Uh- so I don't think I don't think this drops Luciano out of massive contendership okay yeah he ran into a real nugget of a fighter at that stage i just i don't think that puts him back to step 10 i think he can if, if mccullough is removed out of that situation very similar to caleb right out get, he gets bumped straight back into that i think that fight now yeah. to me makes a lot more sense than it did previously yeah, I think that, and, and just to clarify, uh, Vale has had one fight in 2022, and then his last fight previously to that was 2020. The fight before that was 2018. So it's three fights in five years. Um, yeah. I'm sure if you talk to him, perhaps not all his fault or, or, or vice versa, but look, that like you said, I, I can see that side of it. I still want to see that Vale fight um, just so we can put, and that was the whole point of the whole narrative, is almost so we can put that to bed. We now don't have to talk yeah. about Luciano uh, being number one type thing because he, he's not anymore. Uh, McAuliffe is. And then if we get Vale and Luciano, we can then put that to bed and that fight can be over and we can we can move on. Or if Vale kind of... My thought was Vale and Jono and then uh, Joey and... I uh, can't even tell you who right now, but Joey... Oh, I was thinking Joey and Kit. You know what I mean? Just like a Kit Campbell. Yeah. Like, just like yeah. a... Next, and then next fight, winner gets the title. And then you kind of, you, you work it out that way type thing. I thought that could be quite interesting. Oh, oh speaking of, actually, that's, I was trying to think who it was that just came to head. Did you see, so obviously you put that, um, the question up on your thing, the stories about matches to make for the Hex one. Yep, the May Did you see the Kit Campbell there... matchup they suggested? Uh, Kit Campbell versus Blood Diamond. Oh, bro. Yeah. Oh, stop there. I like that. Oh, I did not hate that. That's a that's a that's a very very good one. And speaking of announced fights, look, Eternal yep. uh, Eternal MMA oh. eighty two now Eternal. Oh, just I I these these are some cracker fights like they are coming out ready for twenty twenty four. Help me, Eternal. You're my only hope. I'm looking <laughs> forward to. The- <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. Oh. Look, what, what were your thoughts on now? We've we've we already had Alden Bates versus uh, Caleb Wright out, which is you know take all my money. I'd watch that fight in a car yep. park. We yep. then have uh, the Quill and Sourkill taking on uh, Don Marfan. Now Don Marfan. I do I do have word. I actually spoke to the man Jack Becker. Not available for that date. Okay. Yep. Didn't want to miss his best mate's wedding. That man has given up enough sacrifice in his yep. life to this sport. You, you've, there's moments that you've got to take a step back and, and enjoy yep. life as well. And and I think that's that's warranted. Marfan gets what he wants. You know, uh, one man steps away, he steps in now. I feel like Marfan is in the perfect position. He went on an absolute tear. He's wanted this rematch. Quill and Southfield might be going, hey, I don't know if I necessarily that does much for me. Perfect storm happens, and Josh Togo, David Martinez, who we both love, go and get booked at Brave for in Jakarta, a, a, bah- a Bahrainian a, a MMA promotion. So they're off over there, November 25th. They're out of the sort of narrative. Eternal goes, who's been loyal? Who's been dominant? Who, like, where's the story? A rematch. Don rematch. Marfan versus Quill and Sourkill. Now, I don't know how I thought about it last time, felt about it last time, but since all of that happening, Mr. Potter, I think I really like that fight. Oh, mate, I don't hate it. 
don't have it all. But especially, it's not like Don Mar fans just crept along after that loss. He's gone and just murked dudes. Like, just looked like an absolute killer. And and in saying that, Sulkild has absolutely murked dudes. So you got a couple of absolute murkers just jumping in the game. Like, how is that not a great fight? Yeah, how does that not end up great? I do like I do like uh, rematches too on the MMA regional scene because then it makes it look like you're not just clearing guys out. No, oh, who can I fight? I'll bring an international. I'm just gonna get names on my record. Like it builds this legitimacy. Like him beating Marfan again. I feel like the the Hunter Campbell and the UFC guys look back and they go, oh, "Okay, who's Quillen fought? Oh, he fought that guy again. Oh, let's have a look at that guy." And then they start to see this like ecosystem. Yeah of fighters earning their way back. And that's what helps out guys like Luciano and, and whatnot. So I think that's, I think that's a good fight. And look, my fan could come out and I might say he doesn't deserve it. And then he comes out and start just quill it. And then I go over <laughs> three. Are you, are you doing the favor and say that mate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. You're like right, the but... anti, you're like the anti EA sports cover. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'll say it. My fan, I don't know if you deserve this title shot. Now I'm really excited for this fight. Yeah, now, he's good. now he's on. He's safe. <laughs> he's, now he's going to knock out Quillen. But look, it's, <laughs> it's going to be incredible. If Quillen is, is what we say he is, then he will be able to take care of my fan like, like quite easily. And if my fan has improved, like we all think he has, this will be a very, very different fight. Yeah, yeah, I see. I, I, I smell something special in that one, mate. Now, before I, I, I let you go, I wanted to uh, talk about one more fight that was announced. Now, you know me, I don't like drama. And I was thinking, what am I going to do now that <laughs> Michael Manu and Emrahan Hekamuglu is out and and Mr. Cam O'Neill, the great eternal uh, lord, gave me uh, Alan Philpot versus Rod Costa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm about it. I'm about it. I love it. And you're oh. gonna love. You're gonna love. That's one of your. That's gonna be your little beacon of lead up. You know oh. what I mean? Something every oh, week just... just to stoke at. Oh, uh, it's already. Alan Philpot has put out uh, messages between him and Rod Costa, where Rod Costa was saying, "I'm not gonna fight you. I'm gonna fight Logan. If he get, can't take it, I'm gonna fight anyone else but you because I don't like you." Like, and Philpot's like, "Nah, I call the shots. I'm the best. Like, let's do this." And it's just like back and forth. And both guys have quite close relationships with the promotions. Both guys have, like, there's no, like, the promotion's not looking after any one guy or anything like that. And it's like, both guys are killers. Both guys have been in slumps. And now yep. they sort of, they get to prove, like, who's the man now. I I could not be more stoked for that fight. Uh, like, uh, it, it, there should almost be a T-minus clock to when you're going to have both these guys on for that joint interview, which is going to, this might even happen multiple times. You might uh. even have, like, a, a Phantom Menace three-part series just to have oh. these guys on. It was amazing because Phil Pot said exactly that. So <laughs> he's keen. Uh, final fight of that of that card uh, or that's been announced, uh, Anthony Drillich versus Jake Hill. Now, Jake Hill did put something up online saying he had not signed the contract yet. So I don't know why you're talking about that fight, um, which I found very interesting. But I can yeah. only imagine that that is maybe just a jump of the gun and they'll get pen to paper for that. Um, if not, you know, who knows what, maybe they can get nickel in there, but I would, I would, I would sort of assume that Jake Hurl, who just beat Brad Ramsey, who's been around forever. He fought Daniel Mini T Williams. He's a cracker of a fighter from Adelaide, um, taking on Anthony Drillich. That's going to be a nice flyweight matchup. Yeah. yeah great one. Drillich looked amazing in that last fight, showing some really good grappling to go with those heavy hands. Ugh. So uh, yeah, very good. Four, that's So four title fights on that. I mean, look, I've never liked uh, the battle between the promotions more than they just, oh. I mean, Hex, Hex is going to New Zealand. Uh, we've got Eternal MMA. Like it's, I've, I'm hearing a whisper, Rogue MMA might be coming back for 2024. So, Beatdown, beat Damien Brown has suggested to me, it is going to be the best year for Beatdown promotions. I mean, it can't get much better than that. And it's uh, Australian MMA. Tell you it's, what, and look, uh, we got de- we got demolition on uh, oh, this weekend. Big Wayne Cow. Oh, just look, it's incredible, Callum Potter. That that basically rounds us out for the year. I'll I'll let you get back to your family and reintroduce yourself oh, to them. Right. Yeah, keep yeah, getting, yeah. Got, keep getting. I got wife and kids, mate. No, uh, yeah, same. I don't. I actually have a, a new girlfriend. The other one left me. I didn't even notice the whole transition. But, <laughs> like, so here you we saw are. A different toothbrush yeah, in the bathroom, mate. Weird. Weird. Um, <laughs> 
But look, I loved uh, I loved every minute of this year. Uh, thank you for introducing awesome. yourself in into this wide world where just two little nerds can talk about Australia. Yeah, yeah, we are, my friend. But mate, we have a big 2024. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you next year. Stay well, mate. I'll see you soon.